everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in this video we're going to be tackling two Python web development frameworks called Django and Flask. Now if you're anywhere near the Python space you've probably heard of both of these frameworks. They are quite popular and they are what enables you to use Python for web development. So a lot of times developers have many questions, which framework should I learn, which one should I use for a potential website or maybe startup or small business. So this video will actually try to address some of these concerns and tackle the different things and different features associated with each of these frameworks as well as how we can really compare them. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we really start, it's important for us to discuss some things related to Django and Flask specifically. They are mainly great for Python developers looking into web development, so a lot of times Python developers sometimes feel restricted that Python may be like just, you know, bare bones Python, you might not be able to do much with it unless you maybe go the machine learning uh, path or maybe some other types of things. Now, of course, with Python, you can do apps, you can build websites, and for building websites, you have two options. So you have Django and Flask. And by using Django and Flask, you're really benefiting from all of Python's strengths. So Python has so many open source libraries that you can use for free that you can benefit from in your website development by using Django or Flask, so by using Python-based web development. And both Django and Flask are also free and open source. So this is something to keep in mind. This is especially good if you're, you know, um, you know, you're opening up a website for a specific business or a startup. And they are very popular. So they are the top two Python frameworks. Um, many surveys and studies have really covered that Django and Flask are most are one of the most widely used Python frameworks. So this is super important. That means there's a huge community around it, so many developers who can help you, who can answer your questions on Stack Overflow, as well as multiple job opportunities. So for Django and Flask, you will find many jobs. You will find these names on many job requirements as well. So of course, they are an asset to your resume and to your CV. And the goals of these two frameworks are quite similar. So they're both fast and productive for web app development. So they take away that sort of ugliness that comes with web development the sort of hard work, the hard concepts that you have to understand. So both of these frameworks works really well for taking away those problems. And each of them has specific types of use cases. So this is really important. And this is what we'll be discussing in this video. Where and how should I use Django? Where and how should I use Flask? So Django, before we really start comparing, let's talk about each framework separately. So Django is a Python-based free and open source web framework. So we said this before, it is free, it is open source, which can be a huge benefit for developers. It follows the model template views architectural pattern. So this is um, the architecture that Django comes with. And really the code that you can get directly from the Django developers, so this is what they use for marketing, is that Django is the web framework for perfectionists with deadlines. What this implies is that it provides you know, a way for rapid development that it enables you to build really good websites quite fast, so within certain deadlines. And it does that by providing you with integrated ready-to-use solutions. So it provides you with so many built-in features, so many already existing components that are required for web development, like some of the basic building blocks of web developments are already completely done. And it really takes away so much of the hassle. So like we said, an example of a Django website is the Instagram website. So uh, Instagram's web, like the web version of Instagram, obviously not the mobile version, it uses Django. And this is an example of a huge website that is based on Django and is based on Python. So of course, keep that in mind, just understand that these frameworks are actually quite powerful. Next up is Flask. So Flask is a micro web framework, and we say micro framework because it does not require particular tools or libraries. It does not have too many built in things such as Django. So it has no database abstraction layer, form validation, or any other components. And just a side note that these definitions that you see on both of these slides are actually straight out of the official definitions of both of these frameworks. This is not something I've written myself. So I just thought I'd make that clear and give credit where credit is due. An example of a Flask website is Airbnb's website. So again, a really huge website with so many users is built with Flask or you know contains Flask. And this is something to keep in mind and something to really 
like inspire you like how important these two frameworks are and it should really stress the point that even if you are simply a python developer you can be into web development like you should not regret choosing python as your first language and then you know ending up with of course i do encourage you to explore other languages such as javascript as well but i'm saying that you should not feel limited and within python so know that python can be used for great websites now let's start comparing so we want to compare django versus flask ideally you're asking me this because you know you're a developer you're adding some skills onto your resume or maybe you're actually trying to build a website you want to use python but you don't know where to start or you're looking for job opportunities and so on so let's see how are we going to compare these two frameworks django by its own is definitely more complex than flask who is simpler and more beginner friendly the fact that it provides so much built-in features makes development much faster but Flask gives you more flexibility and control. So you can see in Django, we have the built-in auth, database access, sessions, and so on. But Flask, on the other hand, while it does do less on your behalf, and you might think, this is such a bad thing. Like, okay, Django already has everything done. Why would I need Flask then? Well, the truth is, it provides you with more flexibility. And sometimes this is something that developers truly seek. And they think that, you know, I have more control over my website, I can create and I can remove different types of things. Whereas Django really does provide you with a bulk of built-in items, which might feel a bit constraining for some developers. All right, so that's like maybe one of the few first points that we have just discussed. The complexity versus the simplicity of Flask and also the amount of built-in features and how that translates to more flexibility on Flask's end. Next up, we actually want to talk where we want to use these different frameworks. So Django is ideal for very large projects and Flask is more ideal for straightforward applications. It is quite lightweight. Meanwhile, Django is heavyweight and that is mainly because of the things we just discussed. So like the boatload of built-in items can make Django quite heavy and can make it a quite large project. Meanwhile, with Flask, you really don't need to start with anything. You can just start coding, building up your small application, and you will have a very small kind of code base. Meanwhile, in Django, that does not really seem to be an option. It is quite complex for small projects. And I will tell you this from now, if you're building, building a very straightforward web application, such as a blog or something like that, definitely go ahead with Flask because it is much more ideal for such scenarios and Django might be overkill. So sometimes too many features is like bringing a knife to a stick fight and you might feel that you are way too like there's too much overkill you're, you're doing way too much and you definitely don't need it you definitely do not need these large projects for such small applications another thing about flask that i want to mention real quick it is actually ideal for rest apis you can find millions of tutorials about flask and rest apis so this is something that is really popular in the development community and yeah feel free to check that out i just thought i'd mention it and maybe one day I'll do my own tutorial or my own series on both of these different frameworks. And in Flask, another thing we want to say is that you build most things on your own. So you really do have more control over your application. Whereas, you know, with Django, you get everything done. And that can be really good if you, let's say, you want to build a super large thing in a very short amount of time. So do not think that this is like a total con for Django. Next up is we want to talk about the learning curve. So Django and Flask are both really easy to learn. So they're both very easy to learn, very easy to get, you know, like acquainted with and really try to understand them. But how does things differ? So we don't like we know that these things are different. How does it differ? So the truth is, with Django, it's really tougher to start. So a lot of the code that Django gives you will be confusing. Now, what do I mean by the code that Django gives you? So Django, like we said, so many things are already done, they're pre-made, they're built in, they have like thousands of libraries. But what happens then? What happens is you get loaded, like you get all this code preloaded into your project. And you're a beginner and you don't really understand too much about web development and you see it and you're definitely scared and you can't understand what this code really means. So the code becomes like super ambiguous, you don't really get what's going on and then you, you start to have some problems. So you might feel discouraged, you might really work with a website that you don't really understand, and that can definitely be a total con. Meanwhile, with Flask, 
setting up a project is super easy. You don't really need a lot of web development experience. You don't really need to understand too many things before you actually start. You just need some good programming experience. Whereas with Django, knowledge of web development will make you better at Django. It will make you learn it faster and it will make you understand what's going on. At the end of the day, our goal is not just to build this website, but also to build it while truly knowing and understanding everything that is going on and not really just pasting code from everywhere and hoping it works out. Whereas, another thing we should mention, like now you're probably thinking that, okay, maybe I'm not too experienced with web development and maybe, you know, Flask is sounding much better for you. There is one con, however, here that we're going to discuss. While Django is harder to start with because of the, you know, required web development experience I was just talking about, you might find that as soon as you actually do kick off, adding features becomes super quick. So you will be able to add features upon features and scale your website. Um, by the way, both of these you know, frameworks are highly scalable. But with Django, you're going to be able to add features into production much faster. So once you get the hang of Django, it's much faster and much easier to use than Flask. Whereas Flask, on the other hand, it's easier at the start. So it's easy, easier to kick off a project. But once the project is there and you want to add more and more features, it becomes quite hard. So it becomes harder to add more features. And because of this trade-off that we were talking about, like the flexibility and all those things. So, you know, we were talking how Flask gives you more flexibility, but that flexibility comes at a cost that it is harder to add more features. It is highly recommended that if your website is sort of static, that you will not need much complex and interactive features to be added in the future. So let's say it's just blogs, with other sub pages and other you know blog posts and all that flask is definitely your choice but if you're building a super interactive website and as you grow you want to add more and more features which may be the case for you know startups who plan on growing and scaling django may be better it might be harder to start but in that case later on you will feel the gain when you start pushing out features and putting them in production much faster so to summarize everything that we've just talked about, there is really a trade-off here. We really did say that Django may be more complex, it may be overkill for small projects, and it has its advantages and disadvantages. It has things like the built-in functionalities it provides you that saves you lots of time. Whereas Flask is simpler, more straightforward, it's easy to learn, and it, it really just gives you so much flexibility, but it might be harder to add new things later on since you need to build everything yourself. So my final verdict for you is it depends. So it depends on your use case, on the scenario, and everything that you're going to be building with these frameworks. I really hope this was useful. And please let me know which framework you will be choosing down in the comments down below. And yeah, that's really it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one and bye.